anti-Semitism is something that has been around for centuries, but seems to have sort of mutated again over over recent decades. I think there was like a short reprieve after the Holocaust, but but now, and of course, since October 7th, I think the, the figure I heard the other day was that anti-Semitism has increased over 400% since that time and it, it may be even higher. I don't I don't know if I have the most recent figure. But how how has this happened? Why has this happened? Specifically since uh, since this uh, horrific massacre on the 7th of October. So, um anti-semitism works a bit differently than other forms of hatred. Other forms of hatred are usually driven by an accusation of inferiority. One group finds the other people group inferior in some basic way. And so they find the right kind of dehumanizing rhetoric that highlights that sense of inferiority. And then they can persecute the other group with less guilt and regret. And so this accusation of inferiority is what drives the transatlantic slave trade. It drives the pushing of Native Americans onto reservations. It, it drives a sense of tolerance of violence against women as just a normal part of every society. Uh, this sense of an inferiority. But Jew hatred is different because it's typically driven by a sense of undeserved superiority. So how is it that there's so few Jews in the world and, you know, we've tried our level best to treat them so badly and yet they've managed to do so many consequential and influential things in the world. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? There must be a conspiracy afoot. They must have some secret way to pull the strings behind the scenes, to control the weather, to manufacture controversies. And it's very, very easy to pour gas onto this fire because you just have to take whatever is politically unfashionable at any particular moment. And you can just accuse the Jews of masterminding it. So the oh. communists hated capitalism. So to them, the Jews were the ultimate capitalists. And to the capitalists who hated communists, we are the ultimate communists. Uh, the Nazis, they wanted racial purity, so we were the ultimate race contaminators. Think about the guy who shot up the Tree of Life synagogue in Pittsburgh. Now, he perpetrated mass murder because in his eyes, Jews were bringing too many immigrants to America in an attempt to replace the white population. So when your enemy is an actual virus like COVID or the Black Plague, then you can blame the Jews for creating or spreading it. And when the enemy is the weather, then you can blame the Jews for controlling it or manipulating it. So <laughs> now we're in 2023 and there's this new sin in the West and it's called whiteness. It's racism. It's privilege. Um, and so the Jewish people have been cast as the paragons of white privilege, as oppressors of black, brown and indigenous people of color. And the Palestinian nationalist movement has very effectively kind of hooked itself onto this narrative and it casts the Israeli Jews as white settler, colonialist oppressors of poor, structurally oppressed brown Palestinians. Um, now, in order to get at this narrative, you have to ignore some inconvenient facts. You have to ignore that fully half of Israel's Jewish citizens are the descendants of refugees from Iraq, from Morocco, from Ethiopia, from Yemen, not from Europe. And by the way, like, People from Europe, their presence in Israel is not any more illegitimate than the presence of Jews from other countries either. I, I don't want to you know, play into that, right. that dynamic. But the other fact this ignores is that um, the Arabs were the ones who actually invented the chattel slavery of Black Africans long before Europeans ever adopted it. And discrimination against uh, Black Africans is very strong still in Arab society, even in mm. Gaza, which has a neighborhood called Al-Abid, where Afro-Palestinians live. And Al-Abid means slaves. It's the neighborhood for the slaves. Wow. Um, so in, in discrimination against Blackness and Black people is very strong, continues to be strong in many um, Arab societies. Um, this Another inconvenient fact to this narrative is that the Arabs are not actually indigenous to the Levant, which is where Israel is, but they're indigenous to Saudi Arabia. So they actually colonized the rest of the Middle East and North Africa. They did it through the vehicle of Islam. And Islam was kicked off in the seventh century with a mass genocide of the Jewish communities of Mecca, Medina, and Baghdad. 
Um, unfortunately, none wow. of those facts actually fit the white colonizer narrative, so they're discarded. Um, so that's, I think the latest mutation, um, it fits with the new fashionable anti-racist, uh, perspective that's popular in the West. Um, I personally actually agree that racism is bad and that all of our Western societies have room to grow, um, and that we all have work to do to overcome any residual, uh, legacies of discrimination. Um, but I don't think that our country shouldn't exist just because they have room to grow. And so when I look at the state of Israel, I look at it as an imperfect society that, like any democratic society, has room to grow, has issues, needs to constantly be improved. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Palestinian nationalist narrative is that it shouldn't exist at all. Um, right. and, and I feel we have to push back against that uh, you know, really forcefully. And what's really sad to me about the way that anti-Semitism tends to mutate is that it always misses an opportunity for introspection. Um, there's always an opportunity to look at the Jewish people, to learn from us, from our values, from our sense of community, from the habits that we have, which actually generate our resilience and our ability to pick up wherever we get expelled to and build again, um, to look at our sacred texts, which we share with, with, our, Christian, with our Christian brothers. Mm -hmm. So there's really a chance to appreciate that there's this unique and interesting people group in the world who have survived so much and contributed so much and who really want nothing more than the opportunity to live free and at peace in the land of our ancestors. And is that really such a nefarious thing, you know, to work towards and to hope for?